pleasure. See, so you're stimulating yourself for a sexual feeling. Now, the importance of this definition is for us to understand exactly where it is going. Uh, the feeling that you get is a sensual feeling. That means it's a feeling of the senses. It's um, uh, a pleasure you derive from yourself, from touching your own body. And then the kind of feelings we get, sensuous feelings that we get, can range from something as light as um, uh, touching your ear or putting something into your ear. And, you know, there's a feeling you get and the ringing of the nose or sometimes even the rubbing of your body or massaging your body, not because you got some pain or something. There are all kinds of sensuous feelings that we get in our bodies. Now, sensuous here, meaning mere animal feeling, meaning not spiritual, just your body. See, those feelings that you get in your body. Now, from the age of puberty, you begin to discover some things about yourself and your genitals begin to make more sense to you than when you were younger plus that you become aware of your sexuality now that that makes masturbation which is um, purposely to derive this sensuous feeling which is more than just scratching your head and enjoying it or um, having some part of your body scratching you and, and you feel like you, you enjoy what you're doing. This is a little more than that because you're deriving the kind of sensual pleasure that goes into your emotions. That's what makes it a little more. But the reality is it's still your body. It's still your body. Now what goes on in your mind it's a totally different thing because whatever pleasure we derive in our bodies depends so much on us as individuals the fact is some people always demand more than others for example there are those who enjoy eating but even though they enjoy eating they eat their own food their own meals their own rations then there are those who enjoy eating more they eat theirs and eat the ones belonging to other people now what are you beginning to get there they are getting less restrained in their actions in their desire to satisfy their feelings in their desire to satisfy their hunger they're going more and more now that's the same thing that happens with masturbation or any other thing any other sensuous desire now remember, a sensuous feeling is not necessarily a sin. A sensuous desire is not necessarily a sin. In fact, it's not a sin. In the same way that sin consciousness is not a sin. You can have sin consciousness, the consciousness of sin, whereas you have not sinned. And that's actually the problem with a lot of people. There is no way in the Word of God that suggests that masturbation is a sin. Because it's a pleasure that you derive for yourself. Now, here, here's something that's very important. Just because somebody enjoys something doesn't mean he's going to continue doing it. Now, there are many of you who are actually bound by a spirit of masturbation. So, is there such a spirit? Oh, yes. Anything we continue to do and allow to control us will become an opportunity for Satan to seize the mastery in that area over us. Whether it's soft drinks you like to take, you can become as bound as someone who's an alcoholic. You see it? Anything that you let control you would eventually control you. There are people who may masturbate and not be controlled by masturbation because it's a purely sensual feeling and it's your own body. And it's not the abuse of the body because you actually, like I said, is a sensuous uh, pleasure that you're deriving. So, 
you are not abusing yourself as some people say you are abusing yourself it's not self abuse the problem is when that masturbation becomes a controller of your actions because it can control you and once it begins to control you you almost can't do without it it's like the guy who cannot do without smoking it's like the guy who cannot do without drinking so anything that you let control you will eventually control you and once you are controlled by anything you have opened the door for satanic manipulation and once satan begins to manipulate your life you got trouble and there is where the real danger is and that danger is in anything so what you have to do with your life is to let nothing dominate you anything that you do without control that means that you let control you and you're not controlling it you're not in charge will eventually control your life and dominate you and so that's where the problem of masturbation really is because it's something that you know the more pleasure you derive from it the more you want to do it for example there are those who stick something into your to their ears they always endure it and because of that they're forever doing it you always see them with this habit it's become a habit there are those even though they're adults love putting their fingers into their mouths and sucking and they've done that all their lives and no one stopped them while they were growing up because it's more common with children and now as an adult they have these fingers in their mouths and they're sucking because they enjoy it some say that when they are reading adults and they say that they, they love sucking their fingers while they are reading what a habit they got it while they were young and nobody stopped them and so masturbation can also become a habit and when it becomes a habit there is where you lose control of yourself there is where you lose control of yourself and then it becomes a problem so whatever it is no matter the sensual sensual um, feeling that you get in anything don't let it control you it's so important don't let it control you sometimes we eat because we just enjoy the taste even though what we're eating has no nourishment of any kind we just enjoy the taste so we've given that over to our taste buds I remember somebody a, a minister of God one time a man of God he said God told him to stop taking coffee now God didn't tell everybody to stop it but God told him to stop it God can tell you to stop masturbation God can tell you to stop anything because it may be dangerous for you because God doesn't like anything to control you but whether masturbation itself is a sin it's not a sin but don't let it control you uh, there's a word in the scripture that's used in several verses it's the word lasciviousness and lasciviousness actually uh, from the Greek word aselgeia means wantonness lewdness absence of restraint insatiable desire for pleasure and licentiousness now when you have those words in your mind from that very word lasciviousness it will help you understand better um, what I want to explain to you here the first one is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 19 and I'll read from the Amplified Version in their spiritual apathy they have become callous and past feeling and reckless and have abandoned themselves a prey to unbridled sensuality eager and greedy to indulge in every form of impurity that their depraved desires may suggest and demand it emphasizes an unrestrained way of living we're talking about lasciviousness here another another portion is first Peter chapter 4 and verse 3 by the way the word lasciviousness you will not find in the amplified version just gives you those uh, expressions that are used in defining the word otherwise you find the word particularly in the King James Version so what I might do is read the King James Version first and then read the amplified I'll go back to the um, to the last one I just read to you which is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 19 King James who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to walk all uncleanness with greediness see then compare that to the 
to what I read to you in the Amplified. Now I want to read another one, 1 Peter chapter 4, in verse 3, from the King James first. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. It says when we walked in lasciviousness. Now, how does, Peter, how does the Amplified explain this? It says, for the time that is past already suffices for doing what the Gentiles like to do, living as you have done in shameless, insolent wantonness. It says, shameless, insolent wantonness. Then the last one is Jude. Jude has only one chapter. And we are reading verse 4. It says, for certain men have crept in stealthily. Let me read the King James first. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, from the Amplified, the same verse. For certain men have crept in stealthily, gaining entrance secretly by a side door. Their doom was predicted long ago on godly, impious, profane persons who pervert the grace, the spiritual blessing and favor of our God into lawlessness and wantonness and immorality and disown and deny our soul master and Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, all of this goes on to explain something to us about unrestrained desire because you remember we defined masturbation as stimulating your own genitals for sexual pleasure now the desire here is for your own sensual feeling the problem is when this goes to become unrestrained that's why i said it's walking a tight rope when it becomes unrestrained it's your own body so at that point you haven't seen it it's when this thing now takes a hold of your heart. For example, if you went into a shop and picked an item mistakenly and went home with it and didn't pay for it, and you got home and found out you picked that item mistakenly from the shop, have you stolen? Not really. God's not going to hold you guilty of stealing. You may not even be uh, charged for stealing if you found out that you had it and then took it back if you returned it to say i mistakenly took this thing and i want to return it now in some cases returning it may even be difficult maybe because of damage or loss but because your heart didn't have the motive of stealing it you report it even though you took that thing you took that item from the shop and went home with it without paying for it. You haven't stolen because your heart didn't intend stealing. You didn't covet that material to steal it. Now, what if you took it and you did the same thing, but the state of your heart was the intent to keep it for yourself. The intent to take it and have it for yourself. Now the intent in your heart has changed everything. That's why Jesus said what I want to read to you now. In St. Mark's Gospel chapter 7, from verse, I read to you from verse 18. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entered into the man, it cannot defile him? Because it entered not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drought, Purging all the meats. Now, in verse 20, and he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. And so on. It is for from within the heart. You see, it has to do with the heart. The question is, 
even though the act itself has no problem, what's the state of your heart? It's the state of your heart that will determine whether or not you got this problem. And that's why you must purify your heart, purify your mind. And so, um, don't let the, the act of masturbation get a hold of you and destroy you. Because in itself,